Okay, so to start out the eyes, I always love to start with the brows. The brows really frame the eyes and just give a really clean look. Desiree has beautiful brows. You say that they're cousins and not sisters. Mm -hmm. A lot of times brows are sisters related, sometimes not even related, but I think yours are more like sisters. Um, but you have a lot of hair, like you don't need a ton of um, shading. So I'm not gonna use a brow pencil. Um, except maybe in this little, she has like a little bald spot in that side. So I may use a pencil for that. But anytime I have a client that has a lot of hair like this, I always choose a brow powder first. So I'm using the Queen of Brows Anastasia Brow Powder. And I'm gonna use kind of a taupier shade. So we're gonna start with something like this. Forgive my palette, it's been used and abused. Um, I always like to start at the bottom of the brows and I'm using an angled brush. This is my all-time favorite, MAC 266. I like to take the powder just at the base of the brow and flick upwards. You're kind of creating this definition right at the bottom, and that's where I want most of the color to be. And then I want it to be a little bit more natural throughout the brow. So whatever's left on my brush, I pull the residual amount through. Grab a little bit more, always tap off going at the base of the brow, putting it right at the bottom line, and then pulling it through. And on the edges, I do like the edges to be a little more crisp. So I'm going to just draw it right along the base and then fill in where I need. Some people will need a little more correction than Desiree. I think her other brow is the one that needs a tiny bit more correction. This one's this one's her mm -hmm. good child, mm -hmm. the favorite, huh? It behaves itself. Yes, this one does behave. You always have one child that behaves, huh? <laughs> or you wish you do. Mm -hmm. okay. You can see when I'm brushing through, I'm also manipulating the hairs, so I'm making sure that I'm getting them in the place that I want them to be. And if we need to, we can seal them with a brow gel, a brow soap, um, anything that really will make them set. I see one tiny little hole, boop, right there. And anytime I see a hole, again, just go straight for that because that's where the most um, powder is gonna be dropped off. So don't feel bad about getting it nice and strict in there. And I'm just going to fix this inner corner. I like these beginning ones to kind of go up a little bit. So I do like the beginning to be a little bit more natural and not so squared off. Brow trends seem to change a lot. I am a product of the 90s. So thank you, Pamela Anderson. I have thin brows. And uh, now thicker brows are in. So you've got very on-trend brows. Mm -hmm. You're very lucky. So for this second side, her brow beginning, the hairs on the beginning are a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to correct so that we have more sisters. And tell that they're related. And then right here, she has a little bit of a bald spot, which is totally fine. A lot of us do. So I'm going to see if we can correct it with powder. And if not, I will bring in a pencil. So anytime you have any bald spots, you can take a pencil and just do tiny little strokes to create little hairs. And this will make sure that it doesn't fade you get that nice strong brow so in the beginning if you need extra if you're like me and you over plucked in the 90s you need to add some on the inner corners and then the other thing you can always take a concealer brush and clean up any excess so i'm just kind of going back and making sure that everything is nice and symmetrical You always want your brows to start kind of in the corner of your nose and end out at the corner of your eyes. So these are pretty good, pretty even. So anytime I do an eyeshadow look, I always start with a primer. I just feel that you need something for the shadows to stick to. Um, and this one is the MAC Paint Pots. What I love about these is it actually conceals out any discoloration on the lid, so you don't need to have a concealer um, on the lids to create extra texture or creasing. Um, these are really, really great for anyone who has oily eyelids because they're a little drier consistency, but they really make the, the shadows stick. Um, they give 
a beautiful, consistent base to the eye so you don't have the shadow sticking to any oilier parts or wiping off of any drier parts. There's so many primers out there, so definitely use what works for you, what you like. Um, I, I love so many out there. I have probably 15 primers in my kit at one time. Anytime I'm using a creamier or drier consistency primer, I use a flat synthetic concealer brush. Anytime I'm using a primer, I like to apply it with a flat synthetic brush. Um, you can also use your finger, especially if it's more of a liquidy texture, but the drier textures, I prefer using a brush. Okay, so I have this technique and I call it priming the eye. Other people call it transition color or crease or anything, I don't know. There's no specific name for it. I call it priming the eye, so if you ever hear me say prime the eye, it's not just with primer, it's actually creating dimension. So I'm gonna use the BH Cosmetics um, palette. This one is Desert Oasis and this color is Canyon. Um, it's just a beautiful natural tone and Desiree has a nice crease going on, so she doesn't need a ton of contour right here. We're just going to do this as your transition color. So if y'all call it a transition color, sure. Whatever floats your boat. Um, but I'm using the MAC 217, my tried and true favorite brush, I think, of all time. And small circular motions, a little bit of back and forth. I'm just creating dimension on the eye so that I have something for the shadows to transition into as well as creating just shape and, and shadowing and dimension. So go ahead and look up. So see how that just accentuates her eye. So everyone's eye is different and I'm going right in along her crease to create this line right here. But I'm also bringing it a tiny bit above with those circular motions so that you just get that nice faded out blend and a little bit on the outside of her eye. I'm going to repeat this on the other side. So again, a tiny bit of product, tap off, MAC 217 brush, a little bit of back and forth. And I like to start in the outer corner of the eye and work my way in. Depending on your eye shape, you may need more on the inner corner or less on the inner corner. You don't want to close up the eye too much, but we're just going to create this natural dimension right here. And I like to use little a very light touch. Would you say I'm pressing too hard? No, not at all. Yeah, so some people will like really get in there. I, I tend to do lighter touch. I find that you get a really pretty blended out finish. And then I'm just going to, again, drop a little bit of color off on the outside of the lid and pull it outward. I always start every eyeshadow look with this. It just creates the dimension that you need. That way you're not bringing colors up too high and you just have that Perfect primed eye. So next I'm going in with the Anastasia Soft Glam Palette. This color is rustic, and I'm just gonna keep kind of creating a little bit of shadow on the outside of the lid, creating dimension, depth. And each time I go with a darker color, I'm going closer to that crease or that, that definition area. So I'm using a smaller kind of pointier brush. This one is MAC 226 and I'm just kind of really chiseling out her crease bone. If you can't figure out where your crease, some people don't have um, you know, as deep of a set eye or don't have a prominent crease. One way to detect where your crease is, is you can lean your head back and then look where the bottom of your eye socket is. So I don't have the best crease, I'm getting older, so that's where your crease is and you wanna kind of go based on that. So again, a little bit of product on the end of the brush, drop it off on the outside of the lid, little taps, and then we are going to swipe it into the crease, just like this. And right now we're just kind of creating depth and dimension so that we get that really smoky outer corner. Again, using really, really light touch, a little bit of circular motions, a little bit of back and forth, changing it up. just to kind of carve out the crease here. So I'm using more of a pointed brush and because it has this nice point, I'm able to carve out that inner crease really well. If you use too big of a brush, it's gonna get all over and it won't give you the definition that you need. 
Okay, so we've really defined her eyes. They're nice and smoky. We have those prime colors. They're standing out. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the bronzier colors on the lid to just really make them pop. This is a look you can do for every day. You can do it when you're going out, holidays, anything you want. So since she has a hazel eye, I'm actually gonna do a combination of these two. This one's a little bit more of like a purpley bronze and this one's more of a goldy bronze. So we're gonna see what kind of fun we can create with these ones. Sometimes with the more glittery texture um, shadows, it's great to spray a little bit of Fix Plus. So this is just a hydrating spray by MAC and it will create more of a stick when you go ahead and apply it on the eye and that way you get less fallout. So a little spritz. I also like to turn my brush upside down so when I'm applying the color on the lid, it falls right back into the brush and it minimizes fallout. So as you can see, I'm using a small, flat, natural hair brush. I like to use natural hair brushes when I'm doing shadow. They are porous, so they actually pick up the, the powder a little bit better. Ooh, that's pretty. Mm, I know what I'm going to do. Yep, yep. So again, little spritz, turn the brush upside down, press and lift. When you press and lift, you're really, again, catching any fallout. As you can see, very minimal fallout on the bottom. Oh my gosh, look at this really pretty color. Okay, now I'm super excited because we're gonna use bronze and we are going to highlight the center. So then we're gonna get this kind of purpley color faded into the gold and back into that deeper color. So we're just highlighting the center of her eyeball and it's gonna create this beautiful, let me see. Oh my goodness, I love that. Okay. I'm also gonna take my finger. Sometimes when I have a, a glittery shadow, I like to take my finger and just press it just to really get that product right on there. And you get really high color payoff. Do you see how that just grabbed it? Oh yeah. I'm gonna grab the sultry color again with my finger and just press it on. This is going on the outside of the lid just to create a nice fade. Okay. Okay, so we're not totally done with the eyes um, and the eyeshadows, but I do want to bring some of the color underneath. So one of my tricks to make sure that you don't have fallout or it not move, I use a waterproof eyeliner pencil. So go ahead and look up for me. This one is by Makeup Forever, and it's just a beautiful gold color. So I'm going to line underneath her lash line with this. And the reason why I use a gold, number one, we have gold in the top in the shadows but I don't want it to be super dark yet. I want to be able to layer. So this is Aqua Eyes 10L, one of my tried and true old school faves. So all the way from the inner tear duct, I'm lining all the way underneath the lash line to the outer corners. And I use this pencil a lot. As you can see, it's not full, not full size anymore because I love just creating that nice drop shadow look and you don't want your shadows to transfer and to be too dropped. So I apply that first. I'll use a smaller, fluffier blending brush just to diffuse the edges because once that, that pencil sets, it's on there. It's not moving. But what you can do is apply your shadows right on top of it. So I'm just going to use, go ahead and look up, a little bit of that bronze color Sorry, I get excited. <laughs> right on top of the gold liner. And so it sticks to it. And when it sticks, it's gonna stay there. So you just press it. This is a small shading brush. It's faded, I have no idea what number. It's by Mac. Um, so we are gonna get this on the inner corner. And then I'm gonna use the same brush, just opposite side with Sultry, which is that kind of purpley bronze color. And I'm gonna fade that into it. Oh yeah. 
kind of through the center of the eye, and then I'm actually going to do a darker color on the outside. I love using shadows on the bottom. It just creates this beautiful, like, blown out effect. Sometimes I'll do liners, but shadows is just a really pretty effect. All right, I'm just kind of smoking it out. And then I'm actually going to use another pencil. This is Sephora, and this is number 14, Coco. And I'm going to go right along her lash lines with this to define the lash line. Smoke it out in the outer corners. May even bring a little bit here. So this one is also one of their waterproof ones. Let me see. Okay. Again, right along those lash lines, outer corner of the eye. in the outer corner of the lid on the top. Look down. So you can bring the pencil on the top as well. Getting this really dark in the outer corners is awesome. So just creates a nice dimension. And you can apply a darker shadow right on top. So I'm just kind of carving it out with the pencil. And I do this a lot. The pencil really makes it so that your dark shadow stays and stays intense. So using kind of like a domed smudge brush, I'm just accentuating the outer corners of her eye just to give it a little bit more depth and darkness. And I'm going to pull it out slightly. All right, so I pulled out the shadows a little bit, and now I'm taking the brush with that, that crease color, that prime color that I use, and I'm just blending that in. You always want to make sure that your looks are nice and blended so that you get that really soft finish. So I'm just pulling it outward. I didn't add any more product on the brush, but I'm just softening those edges and pulling out. And that's how you get that really beautiful diffused look. A lot of people always wonder how you get that blended look. Keep going. Or take a blank brush, something with no product on it. You don't need to always add products. All right, so I'm just going to finish off this look with a bit of gel liner, and I love using these smaller liner brushes. I find that you get really close to the lash line. This one has a nice bend to it, so it's like a angled liner brush, and it's nice when you're doing makeup on somebody else to really get in there close to their lash line. So you really want to press and get that product on there and drag. If you don't press hard enough, then you might get those little skip marks. So you really want to make sure that you are going both directions from the inside out as well as the outside in, and that will help to prevent those drag marks. I'm just gonna wing it ever so slightly. She doesn't need a lot. But I do wanna kind of mimic our eyeshadow shape. Go ahead and open for me. And then that inner corner, I'm gonna have you look down and out towards me. I'm just gonna pop a tiny bit of liner right in that inner corner. It's always important to get that inner corner just to um, finish off, so. With her eye shape, I'm going to actually lift it up a little bit in the center. And then last but not least, I'm actually going to line her waterline with a black waterproof pencil just to add to the smoky effect. Since we use browns and bronzy colors, you can do a brown, you can do a black, but since we did black liner on the top, I just figured we'd add a nice pop of black. This will create just an added richness of black smokiness to your brown smokiness. So then your bottom kind of fades out from the black to the brown into the golds, and you get that really pretty effect. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of inner corner highlight. Go ahead and open. Just to brighten up since we did do a lot of dark colors. So this is actually from the Anastasia Soft Glam Palette, and I'm using Fairy and Glistening kind of mixed together just for a nice little pop right here on this inner corner. Just for fun. All right, and I promised you guys that concealer was not done. 
Last layer of concealer, and this is another reason why I do skin first. I think that anytime you have fallout, you just dust it away and then always finish with one more layer of concealer. If you want it really sharp, you can clean up that edge and really make it sharp right there. You can just perfect the eyes one last time. Again, applying concealer last. So as you can see, I'm just using my Beauty Blender to blend those edges to get a really nice diffused look. Pressing it in, going right under the eyes, kind of cleaning that up. I'm going to go back over through the center of the nose. I know we already highlighted that, but I'm going to go do it again. Okay. Always get the underside of the nose, the outsides of the corners. And once your concealer's on there, we are going to do our final set, a little lip gloss, and she'll be good to go. All right, so I'm just going to finally set a tiny bit through the center of her face using loose powder. This one is the new setting powder by Elsie. I really like it. It's a little bit more matte, but I like using a lot of dewier products, so I find that it just creates a beautiful matte finish and it really makes things stay. So I'm only going through the center. So chin, I do a tiny bit right here. I may take a little bit under the eyes and I use like a smaller fluffier brush. I don't like a lot of product under the eyes, a lot of powder. So I'm just gonna use a tiny bit and press it right in just to set that so we don't get any transferring. Around the nose, brows, forehead. So you can notice I didn't set any of the cheeks. I like those to just stay really natural. Okay, the last thing I wanna do on her is take, this is called Burnt Orange from the Soft Glam Palette. And look up for me. And I'm just gonna diffuse this outer edge with a really warm, like kind of orangier tone just to make that transition look really blended and soft. You see the difference? See how that just fades out? So using that, again, like that really warm color, going right along. This is a tiny little blending brush and just fading out. Perfect. And I didn't use any brow highlight. We just used the primer that was on there. So I think she's good. Let's get a little lip gloss on there. I'm just going to line her lips. We're gonna do just a gloss, but I wanna give her lips a little bit of shape. So I'm using a natural color. This one is Makeup Forever, probably 1C. Yep, 1C, one of my faves. And I'm just gonna give a little bit of volume to her lips. She's got good lips. So anytime your lip line kind of fades, you have a little more forgiveness so you can put it where you want to, which is nice. Giving a little volume to her lips there, starting in the center and then moving towards the corners. Sometimes I fill in, this is a waterproof pencil so it'll help the lip gloss to stay on a little bit longer and you also don't wanna be left with just liner. So we are finishing off the look with a beautiful gold lip gloss by Becca. I just love to tie in the lip colors to the eyes and since we did that bronzy kind of gold on the eyes, I thought this would complement well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. Don't forget some key points I want you to take away. Primers are your best friend. They'll make everything stick, stay all day. Don't forget to prime, like I do, your eyeshadows, which create that transition and that natural dimension. And then anytime you have a glittery shadow, you can always use a setting spray or a hydrating spray or even your finger just to make sure that they stay and they have really intense pigment. 
and then bringing those colors underneath the eyes will really tie the whole look in. And last but not least, if you have a warm toned matte shadow color to blend it underneath the eyes just to diffuse those edges. Thanks again for watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below what you want to see next. All of the products used in my video are also linked below. And if you want to see more, follow me anywhere at Joe Powell Glam. Thanks again.